In this video, I'll go over why I switched over from Alacrity to Kitty. I'll compare both terminal emulators, go over the things that I like and don't like about each one of them. And I'm also going to go over how I configure Kitty. This is the guide that I'll be following in the video. You will be able to find all of this in my blog post, which is here. It's not uploaded yet, but once the video is recorded, it's going to be available so you can copy and paste the commands from this guide. I'm going to leave a link to this in the video description. First, I'm going to go over why I switched. And there's only one reason, image support. But we're going to go over this in depth later in the video. So first of all, what is Alacrity? As you can see, I grabbed this directly from their website, which is here. You can go over it and check it out. But to give you a quick summary or a quick overview, it's a fast cross-platform OpenGL terminal emulator. So why have I used Alacrity so far? Here in the file, I have some of the things that I like about Alacrity. Number one is that I can store the configuration in a single file and I upload that file to GitHub. Let's say that I need to install Alacrity in another machine. I just download the config, apply it there, and I have all my settings pretty quick. I'll show you where my dot files are in a minute in case you want to get my configuration file, themes, and everything else. The reason number two is that it's cross-platform. I can use Alacrity on Mac OS, Linux, or even if I decide to give it a try someday, Windows. The next reason why I like Alacrity so much is because it's a simple terminal emulator. It has only the features that I need. It doesn't have any built-in stuff like Tmux. It doesn't have tabs. It doesn't have profiles. It's just what it should be, a terminal emulator, and it works great. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't use Tmux. Yeah, I use Tmux every day at every single time, but I don't want it installed in my terminal emulator. I want to install it by myself, configure it, set it up, and do everything on my own. If you don't know what Tmux is, if you want to know how to configure it, I have a video. You'll be able to find that here. Now, besides Tmux, I also navigate between my Tmux sessions using the Tmux Sessionizer script by the Primagen. This allows me to switch to each one of my sessions using a single key map. For example, if I want to go to my Obsidian directory, I press hyper tu, takes me there. If I want to go back to my dot files latest directory, I press hyper tj and I'm in my dot .files latest directory here, or if I want to go back to the guy that I was working on, I press hyper TL, and if I want to see all my Tmux sessions, I have them listed here with hyper BS, and here they are. So I just navigate between these with the key map. If you want to know more about the Tmux sessionizer script, I have a video, you'll be able to find that here as well. I recently created another video in which I explain why I switched from iTerm to Alacrity. In that video, I also explain how I configure and install Alacrity. So if you want to go and check it out, now, after covering what Alacrity is, I'll go over what Kitty is. I have it down here. I have a link to the website here, and it states there that it's the fast, feature-rich, GPU-based terminal emulator. There's a lot of documentation on the website. If you want to know how Kitty is used, we'll go over the basics in this video. We'll install it, and I'll let you know the way that I personally use it. So if I liked Alacrity so much, why did I switch? As I said at the beginning of the video, the main reason is image support. As you can see here, I've taken notes as Markdown files for quite some time now. I first discovered Markdown because of Obsidian. That was the editor that I was using. Let me switch to it so you can see it real quick. Here I have a file. Notice that it has code blocks so I can copy and paste whenever I need a command. Highlighting works really good. I can view and paste images in Obsidian as you can see here. So it's a quite nice editor. I enjoyed using it for a long time. But then I heard about NeoVim, so I started using it. Ever since I started using NeoVim, I spend most of my time in the terminal editing some type of file. It could be Markdown, it could be my NeoVim config, working on scripts, or basically any other type of file. But I had to keep going back to Obsidian to take my notes and read them, because I couldn't see images in NeoVim. I couldn't paste images in NeoVim, and I needed that at the time. Even though I have key maps to navigate between my apps real fast, if I press hyperspace L, I go to Obsidian, hyperspace J takes me to my terminal, I still needed to go out of the terminal, and that didn't feel good. It made me lose track of what I was doing. If you want to know how I jump to each app, I have a video. You can find it here. It's a Carabiner Elements video. This is related to Mac OS, so you can go and watch that if you need. And even though Obsidian has Vim key bindings and VimRC support, it's not enough compared to all the key bindings and key maps that I have configured in NeoVim. For example, in NeoVim, if I want to jump between markdown headings, I configure the key map, which is GJ and GK to go up headings or go down headings. That's really convenient for me. That's something that I cannot do in Obsidian. I tried, but I couldn't. I can quickly open the outline here and I can navigate through different parts of my file. If I want to, I can close it, jump back to the file 
I have a video on the outline plugin that I use. You'll be able to find that in the top right corner as well. Okay. For example, if I want to surround these two words, I just select them first. Then I press GSA quote. I can surround them really easily. That's something that I cannot do in Obsidian. And like this, there are many, many other things that I do in NeoVim that I cannot do in Obsidian. So it just stopped working for me. But as I mentioned, there was still one thing that kept me going back to Obsidian images. Because as you can see here in Obsidian, I can copy and paste images. I can view them. It's not something that I could do in NeoVim at that time. And even though my files are mainly text, I rarely use images. The only reason I needed images or the only reason I need images is for screenshots that I take for university courses. Other than that, everything is just text. But now with Kitty, I'm able to view and paste images in NeoVim. I have a really detailed video on how I do that. I go over everything that is needed in this video. You will be able to find it as well on the top right corner. I forgot to add here on the guide. There's a few things that I don't like about Kitty. It has a lot of extra features that I don't need. It has tabs, it has windows, I think. I'm not sure if it has some kind of multiplexer already included in the terminal emulator itself. And I just want a terminal emulator for what it is, nothing else. But I don't mind all those things as long as it does what I need. I'm fine with it. If I open a new tab, I literally have no idea on how to close it. I tried it once and I didn't know how to go out. I think if you press Command T, it creates a new tab, but I'm not quite sure how to get out of there. So I'm not gonna do that right now. But if you're into tabs and if you're into all of the extra stuff that it includes, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like it. So now that I went over what Kitty and Alacrity are, how to configure Kitty, I'm going to go over how to install and configure Kitty. So like I said, I'm using Mac OS. I'm going to install Kitty using Brew. If you don't know what Brew is, if you don't have it installed, I have a video, it's right here, but you will be able to find that in the top right corner as well. Once you have Brew installed, just copy all this, and paste it back in your terminal. I already have Kitty installed. I already have the themes and everything. So this is just gonna show me that it's already installed and give me a few errors, but no big deal. Oh, since I already had it installed, but it was outdated, it's updating it right now. I'm gonna skip this part and see when it's done updating. Okay, so now Kitty is updated. Notice here that my fonts are already installed and this directory already exists. So nothing bad happens if you run all these commands. You can go ahead and do so. Now we need to get my Kitty configuration file that is in my dot files. So here they are. You can just copy all of this, copy raw file. Then you can come back here to your terminal, create this directory and edit this file and paste the text in there. Let me do that real quick. I'm just gonna copy this, go back to my terminal. I already have all the code there, but if you don't, just copy and paste from my dot .files. If you don't know what dot .files are and you want to learn more, I also have a video on that. You will be able to find it on the top right corner. Okay, so now that you have Kitty installed, I'm gonna show you how I configure it. Let me open my configuration file. I'm gonna go to my dot .files latest directory. I'm here, I have the file open here, Kitty Conf. And here at the top is where I specify the theme. Notice that I leave it at the top so that any settings that are below the theme are gonna be overridden. If you wanna switch to a different theme, just comment this one and uncomment the other ones. All of them are included in my dot .files. As you can see here, here's the list of themes and here's the list of the colors for each one of them. So if you wanna try all of these, just add them to this file and comment and uncomment the one that you wanna use. I think there's another way to change themes in Kitty. I don't like doing that. I prefer using these files so that I can specify directly in my configuration. And if I download these settings into another machine, the theme is going to be applied. I don't need to be changing anything. Here you can specify the font size. Here you can also specify the font family. This is the one that we installed a few minutes ago. This is another setting that I changed because my fonts in Alacrity had more space between each character. These were too close to each other, so I modified this. 95% and that did it. You can also set the scroll back lines. I set it to 10,000. This is a really important command for me because every time that I open Kitty, if there's no team accession, a new one is created. But if there's a team accession already existing, it's going to attach to that session and I can continue working on my files. So if you use Tmux, you might find this useful. Otherwise, you can be executing Tmux each time, but I prefer to run it every time that I open the terminal. This is if you want to change the editor. Notice that I set it to NeoVim. If I press in Mac OS function control shift 2, it's going to open the configuration file in NeoVim. Here below, if you want to set the foreground and background, these are configured by my theme. But if you want to modify them, just uncomment these two lines. This is another option that I configured, make Kitty borderless. If you set it to yes, as you can see here, that's going to disable round corners and it's also going to hide the title bar. 
And if you set it to title bar only, the way that I have it here, the corners are round and it also hides the title bar. Here I also left the comments about the window padding width. I set it to these four values, 5500. Zero, zero. If you set the four values, it's gonna set top, right, bottom, and left. A single value sets all four sides. Two values, as you can see here, set the vertical and horizontal sides. So you can play around with this and see how you like it better. Here, I'm overriding the colors that my theme sets for the cursor and for the text color. So you can do that if you want as well. So how do images work in Kitty? Let me open a test file real quick. Images, test images, this is the file. I have a few images here. Notice that it's the same file, the one that I have here. And I configured NeoVim to show me the images when I hover over them. Notice the format, this is WebP. There's another image here, another image here, another one, another image. This other image is loaded from a URL. I have some other images at the bottom as well. Notice that this is AVIF format. I'm saving them in WebP or AVIF formats because they're way smaller compared to PNGs. This is just a couple hundred kilobytes. But I go over all of this in the video that I talked about previously on how to view and paste images in NeoBIM, how to save the images in different formats and everything that is needed to get them working. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you have any ideas, comments, suggestions, leave comments down below. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.